Welcome to the Livestock Handling Series. My name is Boyd Holden and I'm an Animal Welfare and Livestock Handling Consultant. This series is to help you understand individual cattle behaviour and the behaviour of cattle when they are in large numbers. We then apply this knowledge and understanding to move cattle in the best and most efficient way. This initiative was through the collaboration of Meat and Livestock Australia and LiveCorp under the joint program Live Export Program. The Live Export Program aims to improve the welfare of livestock in Australia and overseas. This series aims at improving the management, health and welfare of cattle and horses in Australia and overseas. The videos demonstrate correct handling of cattle in beef production systems from moving them on pastures to around the cattle yards all the way through to the crush. There are six areas which the series will look at. Behaviour of cattle, six key areas of the cattle yards, develop a strategy to handling and educating cattle, a system to get cattle out of winter pens, how to move cattle on pastures, and care and handling and the use of horses for moving cattle. Cattle have developed behaviours over thousands of years which have assisted with their survival. These behaviours are often referred to as natural instinctive behaviours. In order for cattle to survive, they have been looking for two things, their own kind, other cattle, and predators, which is us. To help us understand this, there is a behaviour called the predator-prey relationship. Cattle are prey animals. They are hunted by predators, such as us, dogs, wolves. So they can potentially see us as a threat. This depends on how we behave. We have distinguishing features as predators, and they have distinguishing features as prey animals. One such feature is that cattle have eyes on the side of their head. This enables them to easily look to see where the other cattle are and where the predator is. This has been very important for their survival. When cattle feel threatened, the natural response is what we refer to as fight or flight response. Cattle will either want to run away from us or attack us. This response can change depending on if cattle are in pastures or in more confined areas such as cattle yards. When handling cattle for any reason, we do not want them to react this way because if they are running away or wanting to attack us, it tells us that we are doing something wrong and that the cattle are stressed and frightened. We always want cattle to stay together in a group and walk so they can be easily controlled. To do this, we must always handle them in a non-threatening way. Cattle are herding animals. This means they seek comfort and protection by being with other cattle in a large group. A herd can range from just a few animals to hundreds and even thousands. The bigger the herd, the safer the more vulnerable animals feel. Knowing that animals like company of their own kind, we should never isolate cattle because they become stressed, unpredictable and extremely dangerous. Creating isolated animals by applying too much pressure on a herd is a common problem. So when handling cattle we want to teach them and assure them that staying together as a herd is a good thing. It is also more practical to move hundreds of animals as one herd than trying to move hundreds of individual cattle. So when handling cattle as a herd, make them walk and not run, and always settle your cattle before you leave them. This will make it easier when you come to handle them again. A herd is made up of leaders, the animals which give direction and set the pace. Potential leaders, the animals just behind the leaders. The followers, which are the majority of the herd, and the animals in the centre of the herd, which are the most insecure animals. The most important members of a herd for all cattle movement are the leaders. Leaders give direction and set the pace. They motivate the rest of the herd to follow, creating the initial movement of the herd. Many individual animals can become leaders, and once they start moving, the other animals will follow. As livestock handlers, it is our job to influence a small number of cattle in the correct manner so that a leader appears. We only need the first five animals to go, 
and the others will follow. Always remember the importance of the leader. Animals won't move without a leader. Cattle, like us, utilise all five senses. These are sight, taste, smell, sound and touch when interacting with their environment and each other. All of these senses are important for beef production. Of these senses, vision is the most important sense for cattle communicating with each other for movement. When cattle see other cattle moving, they are drawn to the movement and they follow. This is how a herd has moved for thousands of years across the landscape. This is why we get the first few cattle to go and then the rest will follow. Cattle have a field of vision which is over 300 degrees. Directly behind them is the blind spot where they can't see. Their vision is divided into two key areas. Cattle have binocular vision in the front and peripheral vision on the side. Peripheral vision is the greater proportion of their vision which gives them the ability to see predators and other cattle outside of their direct line of sight. However, there is a blind spot directly behind them. So they are always looking to see where their mates and their predators are or where we are. Always approach and work the cattle from the side so they can see you. Never stand directly behind cattle for long periods. Instead, move from side to side so that they can see you. Never approach cattle directly in front as this is confrontational and dangerous. Remember, if they can see you, you can influence them. So approach them from the side. Cattle can distinguish different colours such as red, yellow and orange. Cattle have poor depth perception and because of this they will often hesitate and refuse to cross over contrasts like shadows, drains, texture changes and foreign objects. So it is important to keep yards, laneways and ramps clear of obstructions. Cattle also like to move from dark to light, not from light to dark. It is very difficult to move animals from a light yard into a dark shed or bud box. The flight zone is the critical distance that animals like to keep between us and them. It is their personal space. As you can see, just by being amongst the cattle, they want to maintain a distance between them and us. This distance is called the flight zone. It is important not to penetrate this flight zone too quickly, causing animals to panic and take flight, or worse still, that they want to fight and attack us. Move towards the animal's flight zone or personal space to apply pressure and give direction. Then release this pressure by moving away again. This will create livestock movement. If you have cattle which are frightened or uneducated, then we first want to reduce the flight zone. We do this by approaching and retreating towards the animal in a non-threatening manner. Cattle are experts at reading the body language of predators. When you are not a perceived threat, they will allow you to get closer. It is far easier to handle cattle in a pasture and yards when they have a small flight zone than a large one. By understanding the concept of the flight zone, you can influence animals' movement without causing them stress, which in turn makes our job easier. Understanding the four principles of livestock communication will help you to handle livestock in all situations. Principle number one is position. Where are you in relation to the animal's eye? For us to communicate with the cattle, vision is the most important sense. So our body position and what they can see is very important. So even if we are directly behind the cattle, we move from side to side so they can see us. This will assist with keeping the flow of the cattle going and making nervous cattle calm as they can see us. Livestock move around you naturally in a curve. They do this because they always want to see us. They want to keep us out of their blind spot wherever possible. So remember this when moving cattle around the yards, particularly in the slot yards and in the bug box. When positioning ourselves to influence cattle, we often refer to what is called the point of balance. This is a position on the shoulder of a cow. This line is perpendicular to the shoulder of the animal. When we influence the animal behind the point of balance, the animal will go forward and or turn. 
If we approach the animal from in front of the point of balance, it will slow, stop, back up, and turn. This concept helps us understand how we move animals and influence them in races, through gates, and around the pastures. To add to this is the concept of parallel movement. This is when we move parallel to the direction of the livestock. We can move in the opposite direction to the cattle, but parallel. The cattle will go forward and will speed up. When we go parallel in the same direction as the cattle, they will slow down and or stop. We have used this concept around the world for thousands of years. We do this on pastures to slow down or speed mobs up, regulating the flow of cattle through a gate, moving cattle down a race without touching or making noise. Also remember what cattle see will influence where they go. So remove any distractions and make sure people are not in the wrong position to cause cattle to balk or stop. When moving cattle on pastures, out of large pens and in yards, you'll be working with other people. A concept to help you do this is called the inverted T. The top of the T is at the back of the herd and referred to as the baseline. And the stem of the T is the direction you are going. The baseline is where your position should be to influence the cattle to go where you want them to go. Note that the baseline is 90 degrees to the stem. Whether you are moving a single animal or thousands, this T principle will allow you to position yourself correctly and be of particular importance when you are working with other people. If you understand and use this principle, it will help you to no end. Principle number two is pressure. Pressure can be applied by moving towards an animal's flight zone. We must try and ensure when we do this that the animal has somewhere to go. After we apply the pressure, we must release it. This is the reward for the cattle. The timing of the release is very important and separates a good stockman from an average one. Principle number three is movement. Moving our body or our horse will create movement of the cattle. Our movement creates livestock movement. For animals to be influenced, they need to see the movement. So make sure you are in the correct position and then add your movement. For moving cattle down a race, use parallel movement and move in the opposite direction to the cattle to get them to move forward. If you are moving cattle down a lane, do not walk in a straight line. Instead, move from side to side using your body movement and going in and out of the cattle's blind spot to move them. When we are moving livestock for any reason, it is important to understand the movement and the flow of the cattle we are moving. Cattle will move much better when they are moving with purpose. This flow of cattle is very important to minimising stress of cattle in all situations. It also helps us to be very efficient when moving livestock on pastures and through the yards. Principle number four is communication. There are two parts to this principle. The first part is us communicating with the cattle. Is it clear to the cattle what we want them to do? Make sure you are sending the correct message with position, pressure and movement. When you are handling cattle, you are in fact training them for a desired response. So if the cattle are not doing what you want, do not blame the cattle. Think about what you are doing to influence the outcome. If it is not working, try something different. Also, try and see things from the cattle's point of view. The more consistently you get the same outcome, the easier or harder it will become. That is why it is very important to teach cattle to stay together as a herd and to move at a walk. The second part is communicating with your fellow stockmen. Are you communicating with your teammates? Does everyone know what is going on? Use the concepts we have talked about to communicate with each other to get the desired result. If we all start to understand these concepts, we will start to handle the cattle the same way. Working together will make the job easier for you and the cattle. We need to all be good at reading the cattle, what they are telling us, and reading the situation. Then we need to be able to respond to the cattle and the situation in the best possible manner. 
When you start to become an effective stock handling team, you all see the same thing and would respond the same way. This consistency is very important for the handling of the cattle and the beef production system. Make sure that you have a plan of what you are going to do. Do not rush. All good stock handling teams have a system on the pastures and in the yards. Doing these three things will ensure your safety and enjoyment whilst working cattle. It will minimise stress to cattle and improve cattle welfare. If things are not going right, stop what you are doing, assess the situation and apply these principles to identify the problem. Remember, we are in control of the cattle. What we do and how we react determines the outcome. If we understand cattle behaviour and apply the four principles correctly, we will create a quiet, stress-free working environment for both the cattle and us. We are in fact cattle trainers, not just cattle handlers. Thank you for watching the cattle behaviour section. You can now go on and watch the rest of the series and see how the principles that we've talked about apply to moving cattle. Mm -hmm.